Hello and welcome to the Scanning Start of your SharePoint Framework tutorial series. This, in this video, we'll be looking into how do you set up your development environment for SharePoint Framework development. And this is the September 2018 edition. So we keep on evolving these videos and evolving this guidance as uh, always when we release a newer version of SharePoint Framework to make sure that they're up to date and with the detailed steps to get started and also how to do development on SharePoint Framework. Now, the video, uh, video uh, recordings might be slightly behind of the schedule uh, in certain cases, but uh, we will always keep uh, the written format of this guidance uh, up to date. And you can find uh, the written guidance for getting started on SharePoint Framework development and SharePoint developer guidance from the official uh, docs.microsoft.com site. So if you go to docs microsoft.com slash SharePoint, you will land to this kind of a landing page, uh, which might look slightly different, again, depending on the timeline when you're accessing the page. But you can certainly find uh, the SharePoint developer uh, link from this page and clicking that one will then redirect you to the official SharePoint developer documentation. From here, now you can then find uh, the set up your development environment guidance, for example, from the landing page, or you can extend the SharePoint framework from the left menu and the getting started will actually extend you or give you two different articles to get started. So first of all, you need to have an Office 365 tenant to get started, uh, especially with these tutorials, because these tutorials actually are designed to be used against Office 365 tenant. Technically, they do work with SharePoint 2019 as well, uh, but the step-by-step -step guidance are really targeted for explaining how to do development uh, against Office 365 tenant. You can actually subscribe to Office 365 Developer Program and that will give you a free uh, Office 365 tenant for at least a one year. So that's a really nice way to get started on Office 365 uh, development and SharePoint development as well. Now, in this case, we wanted to concentrate on how to set up the development environment. So we have this step-by-step -step guidance and what has to be installed uh, to your machine and documented in here. Like mentioned, we will keep on evolving and updating this documentation whenever there might be some changes on the underlying requirements uh, and the video is meant to be kept up to date based on these changes as well. Now, the first thing uh, what we need to do uh, is install uh, the Node.js uh, and LTS version. Uh, so right now, at the recording time of this video, LTS version is 8.11.4. LTS means long-term support version. So we, right now, we do not support uh, version 9 or version 10 of the Node.js, so you need to install the LTS version. So let's click that one, and let's choose that this is open whenever the download is completed. And this is as simple as clicking and next, uh, agreeing on the license agreement, next and next, uh, choosing the uh, default settings. I think that looks pretty decent, the default settings, and clicking next and installation. I will have to confirm this as an administrator, but we're pretty fast, good to go uh, for installing Node.js on this machine. And immediately when the Node.js uh, has been installed, uh, we're able to kind of double check uh, the versions of our software. And this is also really important when you're reporting uh, any issues, for example, to watch Microsoft. It's really, really important that you know how to check the versions which you are using, because it might be that you accidentally are using, for example, a two new version of Node or NPM, which would not be supported in uh, SharePoint framework development. So in my case, I'm gonna open up a Windows PowerShell. You could actually get uh, the same result using any commandlet uh, on any command uh, UI. But the key point here is to use node-v and I would actually get the result of the version of the Node.js which has been installed. And the second kind of an important thing to, to know is the NPM version. So in this case, we're using 5.6, which is the default version as part of the Node.js which has been installed. And that's all good uh, for now. So we're not gonna update anything uh, automatically uh, on that side. Now, moving on on the Visual Studio uh, side or Visual Studio installation, and this is op obviously optional. So if you want to use some alternative uh, script editing uh, experience or script editing software, you can absolutely do so. Visual Studio Code is, however, super awesome. It is a really great uh, uh, tool. It's fast, it's fluent, um, it's really, and there's plenty of extensions uh, which will further enhance the experience. So let's actually install this one uh, to our machine. And 
getting that one installed it is as simple as to node.js so you basically just download the exe and in this case and uh, the machine is also double checking that the exe doesn't contain any um, uh, well any it, there's a virus checking going on and that's the small delay on this machine but whenever this installer actually starts we can see that the actual Visual Studio Code installation is relatively fast or it is actually super fast. What's great about the Visual Studio Code is that there's a really great and active community uh, maintaining this open source. Uh, uh, well, it's maintained by Microsoft, but there's plenty of extensions and other, uh, other functionalities available for Visual Studio Code. Like mentioned, you can use whatever editor you want. Technically, you can use a Node.js, or sorry, a, a Notepad to do this SharePoint framework development. And the Visual Studio IDE, if you're thinking about Visual Studio 2015 and 2017, they do not unfortunately suit that well for modern web stack development. And that's why Visual Studio Code is the chosen default setup, uh, which we uh, always use within these uh, videos. So installing this one, uh, as easy as Node.js, agreeing the license agreement, uh, clicking next, uh, installing the default setup, uh, installing that on menu. One thing what I would recommend actually uh, is checking these two things uh, or the four things. And this is actually really convenient. So add an open with code action, the Windows Explorer file context menu, and add open action, the Windows Explorer directory context menu. And these are really nice, so you're able to right click a folder and choose to open that folder directly in Visual Studio Code. So you're ready to go uh, really fast in the uh, opening up of your solutions. Clicking next, clicking install, uh, that's a super fast installation as well. And there we go, now the Visual Studio Code installation has been completed. I'm going to uncheck the launch Visual Studio Code because we don't want to actually do that yet. So we want to install certain NPM packages uh, to this machine. So I'm going to start uh, again my PowerShell. Um, it's a matter of a preference. So in my case, I typically use actually Commander. But again, you can use a PowerShell command window. It doesn't really matter. Commander is just an enhanced, well, it's a alternative command line window, which you can modify based on your preference. A PowerShell uh, window is just as fine for the following operations. So what we want to do next is that we want to actually install uh, Yo and Gallup, which are, be, are uh, packages from the NPM package manager from internet. And these are basically f underlying uh, tooling, which we use for SharePoint framework development. So Yo means Yeoman, and Yeoman is basically our scaffolding engine. So it's almost like MS Build if you are, if you come from a Microsoft background. So it be well, it's not MS Build. It's the project files, the templates, a templating engine. If you come from the Windows background, and the Gulp is the MS Build. So Gulp is basically the task manager in the Node.js, um, which we're now getting installed from the npm as well. So both of these are required for SharePoint framework development. And now they're getting basically extracted from SharePoint, uh, from the NPM, which is almost like the, the Node, uh, almost like the Nougat package manager or Nougat package uh, or gallery in the internet. And those are getting pulled down to the local machine. Now, the basic setup, uh, if you're doing development for uh, SharePoint framework, you do need to have an internet connectivity on the machine. So you're able to install all of the stuff to these machines. Technically, it would be theoretically possible to have a proxy within the company uh, company network, which is providing these packages as well. But that is a pretty advanced and, and complicated setup. So now we can actually now see that we got a Gulp 3.9.1 installed and Yo 2.0.5 installed, and it took 54 seconds to actually get that one uh, included. The next thing what we're going to install uh, is the uh, is the actual uh, Yeoman packages uh, for SharePoint framework. So I'm going to do at Microsoft Generator uh, SharePoint. And this is going to install uh, these packages available globally within this machine. That's the dash G on the npm install. And that's going to basically means that I can run uh, or I can uh, scaffold uh, these solutions or projects and using then the Microsoft Generator SharePoint anywhere within this machine. Technically, 
you could actually install these things locally as well for a specific folder or for a specific solution. But typically, if you use the same version for all of your solutions, that is not actually needed. Or if you're using an, um, multiple different versions of SharePoint Framework, you can always use um, virtualizations like Docker to actually make these things happen. But that's it uh, for the basic setup. So what did we do? We, we installed Node.js, the long-term support version. We installed Visual Studio Code, which is basically an optional thing. Um, you could use whatever alternative editor as well. And then we installed a Yeoman, Gallup, and then SharePoint Framework uh, uh, templates for Yeoman. And that means basically that now we're able to then start creation of the or scaffolding of our SharePoint framework solution. But that's something what we're going to actually do on the following videos. So we're not going to deep dive on walking through what are the different options and how do we create the solution in this video. That's the next video in this tutorial series. So thank you for watching and hopefully you'll continue on following videos. Mm -hmm.